Hey, it's Jim Walensky with Altered Space Photo Tribe. And I'm gonna say right off that this video is not as sexy as the last one. We're not gonna make an awesome photograph out of this here, although this would be and is an awesome photograph. But I wanna say that there are a few things that I teach that are more important than this. And what we're gonna talk about today is preparing a raw file for a creative edit in Photoshop. I teach photography on the ground in the classroom at Chicago Photography Classes here in Chicago, which is an amazing place. Um, we've been around 45 plus years, and as far as I can tell, there's really no place in the country that's like it. We've had students that move out of town, and they try to find places in other cities that are similar, and they can't find it. And as a result, you know, I end up tutoring people long distance via the web, which is an honoring and amazing experience. But uh, in teaching my classes and interacting with the students, I've often found them boxing themselves into a corner because of the way they edit their raw files. And it's been common enough that I've had to kind of come up with this framework that I'm going to show you now for editing these files. When you're taking a file into Photoshop from Lightroom, you're going to edit it there you want different things out of the file. The process is different. You want to have different kinds of tonal qualities in that file than you would if you were going to finish the photograph here. The other thing that I'm going to do here is, for those of you that haven't seen it, is I'm going to introduce you to Capture One, which is a piece of software that I really like and you'll see me using a lot going forward. You can see how different this file looks in Capture One. The brights are brighter and the darks are darker. But we're going to do this both here and in Lightroom because I know a lot of you are Lightroom users. So let's just jump back into Lightroom and take a look at this. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for a photograph that has two things. One, all of your tones are represented in your photograph. And your tones are balanced out in the correct way. What I mean is that there's a good relationship between the light tones and the dark tones. The second thing that we're looking for is a low contrast file. Not a lot of darks, not a lot of lights. Room on both sides of the histogram. Why? Because when we take this into Photoshop and we start dodging and burning and adding light and adding shadow, if I have stuff that's pegged all the way to the left of my histogram or all the way to the right of my histogram and I want to add shadows or add highlights, I've got nowhere to go. So I need to leave myself some room so that I can creatively edit and spread the photo out tonally in Photoshop. I've got room for artistic interpretation. So this will become evident to you as we go. So let's just take a look. The only thing that I've got going on in this file right now is I've got my chromatic aberration and lens profile corrections enabled. So the first thing I'm going to look at is where do I want my sky tonally? What do I want my sky to look like? And this is kind of true of landscape photos in general. I'm going to kind of set the sky up here and then bring my landscape into balance around it. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull back my highlights and pull back quite a bit because I know I'm going to push my exposure up. And I'm just looking at what, you know, where do I want my sky to be? That looks kind of right. And tonally, I'm in good shape here. I've got one hot spot. So this is probably something that I would either really work on in Photoshop, but I'd probably clone this area out and bring some clouds into here to get rid of this hot spot. But we're kind of stuck with it for now. So now I'm going to bring my shadows up to balance this out. And so you can see what I've had to do here. I'm going to pull my highlights all the way back and push my exposure a little bit more so I don't have to push my shadows so hard. And, you know, that looks pretty good. So there's not a lot of contrast in here. These blacks are pretty dark. I'm looking at my histogram up here. And, you know, if I turn on my uh, protections here, I can see that I've got some blacks that are crushed, and I don't want that. So let's turn that off. Actually, we can just leave it on. And I'm going to hold down my alt key uh, for those of you that are on a Mac it's the option key and I'm gonna grab my black slider while I'm holding that key down and you can see that my display turns white so what I see on the screen now 
are the tones that are crushed, the blacks that are crushed. And I see some different colors. So that means that mostly in the green channel is where my blacks are crushed. So I'm gonna move my slider to the right until those disappear or until most of them disappear. I don't want my photo to go totally flat, but you know, so this, this looks pretty darn good. So I mean, I've got my shadows, you know, pretty much all the way up. And this is gonna end up in shadow anyway, but I may wanna add some shadow here. So really, that's all I'm gonna do here. I know this photo doesn't look like much right now, but tonally, I'm in good shape. I've got plenty of space to add as much shadow and highlight as I want. So I'm kind of looking at this area back here and I got a bit of a halo here. So I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna grab my curve and just pull this down a little bit and see if that, yep, see it go away. And it kind of evens out the sky a little bit too. So that's pretty good. So I'm gonna bring this photo into Photoshop and then we'll do this in Capture One so we can see the, the two photos side by side. So we're just gonna edit this in Photoshop. I've already got Photoshop open, so it's just a matter of the import happening. And there we go. So we're gonna be able to tell that this is the Lightroom photo because this is a copy, all right? It's just a direct copy of the raw file made at the, at the system level. So I'm gonna go over to Capture One now. And there we go. And now we're gonna work this file in Capture One. So the controls here are a little different, but the concept is the same. If you're a Lightroom user, you're gonna be able to figure this out really quick. I just find that I, I can squeeze a lot more out of my raw files in this software than I can in Lightroom. It's just my preference. It doesn't mean Lightroom is a bad piece of software. It's not, it's awesome. So I'm gonna bring my highlights back. So this is a highlight protection and you can kind of see what's happening in my highlights there, right? So we're just kind of getting rid of those. And my sky is actually not in bad shape where it's at now. I actually think I'm gonna pull this back a little bit because I'm just looking at this part here right now. And you're gonna see how much room I have to really bring these shadows up. Quite a, you know, I've got a lot of latitude here. So I'm gonna increase my brightness here. And maybe I'll bring this exposure back up just a little bit and push my shadows up a little more. And I'm looking pretty good in here. I'm gonna increase my brightness a little more. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. So I still got this problem with my darks. Um, in Capture One, I've got a levels control and I can, here's my black point here and here's my white point up here. So I can lift my blacks really easily to, just by pulling this over. So this is just like the black slider in Lightroom. And here's my histogram. I can see now I got plenty of room over here on the left to add shadows and add highlights. And, you know, I can pull my whites in a little bit and you can see that this white spot's not doing too bad over here. I've got this area over here a little bit. So let's see if we, what happens if we pull this curve down a bit, if that makes that kind of go away. And I'm just gonna raise it here. And yeah, so that's looking pretty good. So I might go back up here to my exposure and just let's just push this a little harder now. And now I can bring my brightness back a bit. Brightness is really midtones, right? You can see that it doesn't really affect the shadows that much. It's really a midtone control. So, you know, I'm looking pretty solid here, I think. My blacks are in good shape. Um, and let me bring my histogram back so we can take a look at that. So my blacks are in good shape. I got a ton of room over here to brighten that up. Um, the other thing that this software has that I really like, and let's just kind of zoom in here a little bit and let this preview render for a second, is it's got not just a clarity slider, but it's also got a structure slider. And the nice thing about this clarity slider is that it doesn't affect the color of the photo at all. So I can bring this up and you can see that my colors remain rock solid. And that's kind of nice. And the structure slider, usually I'm not gonna add very much clarity, if any, here. The structure slider is nice though, because 
you know, you can see what's happening in these rocks here, I hope. It's really bringing out the texture in those rocks. I'm not going to over sharpen this too much, just a little bit. So let's zoom back out and let's take this file into Photoshop. So I'm just going to edit this in Photoshop CC and send a TIFF just the way I normally would. Same process as in Lightroom and it exports this really fast and brings it into Photoshop. So here's my two files. You can see that one handled the lens correction a little differently than the other. Um, I've got a little bit more dynamic range I think. This is my Capture One file and this is my Lightroom file. And I could go back here. Let's just close this for a second and go back into Capture One and see if we can't match that lens correction. So I've got this light fall off slider here and you can see in my bottom left corner I've got a little bit of vignetting. This would be equal to the vignetting slider in Lightroom. And here's my lens distortion. So I'm just going to pump that all the way up just like that. And we're going to bring this into um, Photoshop. There we go. Okay. So you can see that actually my, my frame is a little bigger in the Capture One file. And so there's the Capture One file and there's the Lightroom file. Either one of these files are, are going to give us really good results when we edit. I'm just going to refresh my RGB histogram and you can see that I've got a lot of room on the left and a ton of room on the right if I want to start adding contrast and adding highlights and you know in this case maybe I want to darken parts of my sky and I'm going to want to add some light in here and bring some light up onto the top of this mountain and then if I use a levels control I'm just going to throw one on here really quick this is how I would equalize my histogram when I'm getting close to being done so I would bring this in and then just add some contrast here and now I can refresh my histogram. By the way, I'm always looking at the RGB histogram here. You've got these different displays. And if you don't have this, if your histogram doesn't look like this, go up into this little pancake menu here and click right here. And make sure you've got expanded view clicked. Compact view is the view that you get by default. And I don't find that very useful because I can't see these numbers down here and plus the display is just smaller. So I find this information helpful. So now you can see that my histogram looks really solid. So this is an overview of how to prepare raw files. If I um, just throw a levels on here really quick and just like that. There we go. So I can't stress enough how important this is. If you do this right, you're going to have a much easier time editing. And I'm betting that there's a lot of you out there that have found yourself in a situation where you're thinking, man, I'd like to add some shadows to you know one area or another in my photo, and I can't do it because it's already so dark. This is how you avoid it. Try to keep your image in the middle of the histogram as much as you can and try to keep those brights and darks from being so bright and so dark and don't add contrast when you edit your raw file. Okay, this is Jim Walninski from Altered Space Photo Tribe. You can go ahead and visit uh, the website for more fun stuff and uh, visit the Facebook page too and give the Facebook page a like because we're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff there in the very near future. So be creative and have fun and I'll see you down the road.